Hello, I am Reese Wallace. And I'm Luke Clancy. And this is the Cedar Log. Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about Camp well, Delmont. Actually, Reese, I kind of wanted to set the tone for Camp Delmont and really talk about what, you know, what's happening in this area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, all together, Camp Delmont, kind of like the, the geography of it. Uh, it's about an hour north of Philadelphia. It's about two hours southwest of New York City. The township that Camp Delmont sits in is Marble Township. And it actually has seven registered national landmarks, such as the Bowern Freud Print Shop, the Andreas Reith Homestead, Such Road Bridge, and Swamp Creek Road Bridge. And thank you for that, Luke. So first, we have to start with the prehistory of Camp Delmont to understand how it came into being. Uh, much of this info is from the book A Whale Boat on the Unami and our, by our advisor, Mike Comfort. Um, well, Michael G. Comfort. And he also uh, looked over our script in general, just to add some updates he had since he's had more information come to light to him since he uh, published his book. So Delmont lies on the Anami Creek in the Perkiomen Valley, and this land was home to the Lene Lenape, uh, specifically the Unami branch of the Lenape. The other branches were the Mincy and Olin Dock. I'm probably butchering that last one. I really do apologize. And the land that makes up Delmont was conveyed by treaty to William Penn uh, with, by Chief Mogoxen. I hope I'm saying that right. Again, apologies if not. On April 3rd, 1684. In the treaty, the land along the Pakiomen, I think that's how they said it, which is the Perkiomen, was purchased for four pairs of stockings, four bottles of cider, and two match coats. A match coat is a 18th century term for a blanket uh, worn around the body as an outer garment. This land would later be part of Salford Township in 1727. Germans, Dutch, and French Huguenots were the first to settle the area and the, their population would grow. Thus, Marlborough Township was created in 1742 and this is the township that Mustard Scout Reservation lies in today. Fun fact, camp was once in Philadelphia County since Montgomery County was only created in 1784. And nearby, Sumney Town became a hub uh, in the area as two major roads called Sumney Town Pike and Jerryville Pike connected, to, connected it to the rest of the colonies. Camp and the surrounding area produced gunpowder, uh, various produce, linseed oil, iron, and beer. Nearby Green Lane Forge, or Green Lane Iron Works, was prominent for a time, but the need for charcoal consumed the nearby forests. It is rumored to have produced cannons, cannonballs for the Continental Army. Folks have also farmed the rocky soil, and their properties were actually taxed at different rates, depending on how much arable and rock land they had. But the major industry at Delmont was various mills and the first one was opened in 1742 by a, by a Samuel Schuler. The, the mill made flour and was near the dam at Lake Long. However, there were many more gunpowder mills in the area. A rumor tells of a captured Hessian soldier that was forced to make powder in the area for the Continental Army. The first legit gunpowder mill was built in 1789 and run by Jacob Dash. He owned what is today Cedar Camp at Delmont. These mills continued into the 1800s, and many men were killed in accidents that occurred. Most of the remains of the mills were destroyed by road construction when Lake Long was created. Interestingly, an old metal water wheel was found inland at Delmont by many scouts. Yeah, thank you for that, Luke. The mills were really a core part of the economy in this area, but the area was also littered with stone quarries. So stonemasons would score and drill all the giant boulders you find at Musser. And, you know, they, lots of lines are like, the marks are left by all of this. And they would uh, split the stone using what's called the feathers and pin method. And then they would score and drill. So chisel marks and cut stones are 
they litter Delmont and the whole uh, reservation, and you can still find uh, lots of clearly cut stone. Um, and the rumor is, well, the, actually, the bulk of these stones were used to pave the streets of Philadelphia. And once, you know, the city started uh, using asphalt, the demand for stones disappeared. Uh, and the scouts would later use these stones for Delmont Lodge, to build the Delmont Lodge ceremonial grounds. And they even sent one to E. Erner Goodman for his fireplace because he had asked all the lodges back in the day to send him a stone. Um, Which, so little Delmont fun fact, Reese, sorry to cut you off again. Uh, this is not really about camp, it's just a fun fact It's all for the area, that in Philadelphia, you can actually, if they were to dig up all the old roads and all the cobblestone, uh, it's thought to believe that you could possibly melt it down, break it up enough to actually find gold, real gold, within the streets. Now, it's not us saying go destroy the streets of Old City, Philadelphia, to find gold. But it just shows that, you know, there's riches in the lands nearby. Yeah, definitely. It definitely shows you, uh, I guess, there's technically gold, like, everywhere. You just The question is uh, purifying it. That's kind of cool, though, to think there's gold in the streets of Philadelphia. Yeah. And... For Delmont, there was actually a few Camp Delmonts before the one we know today, which is kind of odd when you think of a scout camp. So Delaware and Montgomery County's council started in 1912, and they rented various areas to conduct summer camps. And the first one was Camp Pequa on the Susquehanna River, about 15 miles southwest of Lancaster and not too far away from my university at Millersville. Uh, Pequot was owned by a trolley company and scouts from all over southeastern Pennsylvania were invited to camp there. So it was kind of more of a, a regional camp than like a, a council camp. But then in 1913, a camp was located on White's Island on the Delaware River. And the camp was 13.2 acres or so and was called Camp Delmont. This location was only used for the 1913 and 1914 season. And in 1914, a scoutmaster named Angelo Myers uh, offered the use of Pioneer Island, a mere 8.2 acres located on the Schuylkill. This location was used uh, in 1915 and possibly in 1916 by some troops. But the island flooded easily, and the scouts actually had to find the highest ground and wait out a flood. Uh, during that summer. And due to this issue, the council executive board wanted a uh, more permanent location for their camp. So back in 1910, council, the council uh, scout commissioner, Isaac Sutton took a hike to the source of, of what was then known as the Swamp, as Swamp Creek. And he uh, remembered the setting when the issue of a permanent camp came up. And thus, in 1916, that hike by Isaac Sutton led to the purchase of the 35 acres in May of 1916, which led to the creation of our modern-day Camp Delmont. Hey, Luke, guess what? What, Reese? I'm holding the deed for that first 35 acres. How did you even get your hands on that? Well, it was somehow my dad's house, and it says that the land was sold by a Georgiana crop. Kratz to Isaac Sutton for 600 around $14,100 today if I'm doing the inflation math right with a hundred bucks paid up front and it describes the boundaries for the land purchased by telling you which rock and tree to like turn at or go towards so they used rocks and trees as landmarks but thanks to this Delmont was born wow Talk about living in the right house. Now, does your dad have any significance to Delmont at all? Uh, he actually used to work for Valley Forge Council and then for Cradle of Liberty uh, when they merged in 96. And apparently a lawyer had these documents for some reason and they gave them to my dad because he was a DE and my dad just, because of, I guess, the, how busy he was with his job, he forgot to return them. So now I have them, and I'm going to give them back to council once COVID's over. Uh, okay, okay. Sounds, sounds good. Okay, so I want to thank everyone for listening to this episode. 
This was a rather longer episode than our typical episodes. If you would like to look back at our previous series of Camp Heart, please feel free to. If you guys would like to add anything to our series or to any future series, or just if you'd like to say hi, please feel free to message us at our email at history at org, or you can contact us on social media with History Unami Lodge. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Pick him.